Hello and welcomes everyone, Anf Wolf with part 4 of my Europa Universalis 4 tutorial series. Uh, a few things before we go to war with Mercuria here as the Mamelukes that I forgot to mention in parts 2 and 3 and I really should have. First thing, let's look at the entire world map if I zoom out here. We are looking at most of it, we're missing a bit of America here. But there's a reason why, and I mentioned in part 1 why we can't see there, we have the Terra Incognita. We need to explore using um, our lightships, um, most likely. Uh, with Crewed by Explorers, which is one of the things we need to explore in our technology groups. And then we need to send them out into, obviously, this area. I'm going to zoom in. And, yeah, see what's behind there. At the same time, we can't see what's happening over in, like, around the Ming Empire. And we can't see Japan right now. We can see a bit of Beijing. But that is because of our, I think, our tech group. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention as well is how to actually improve your technology groups. I did show it uh, in the technology tab. Here we are. But I didn't actually explain how to actually improve these. I apologize for that. Um, I did mention it in the description of part three. But yeah, basically, this these are all involved purely by your your powers, your admin power, your diplomatic power, and your military power. And we are gaining a certain amount of those each month, um, depending on our ruler and which um, advisors we have. And when we have a look at this, if we scroll underneath where this bar is, like an experience bar, basically the same idea, they tell us we need 838 um, power of that particular type, so obviously military power, diplomatic power, admin power, to actually improve our technology in that idea. At the moment, we are part of the Mis the Muslim. Oh, that's going to get me hate. The Muslim Technology Group, because we are part of the Muslim Technology Group, all our technologies cost for the percent extra. Normally, national ideas require about four hundred and fifty uh, technology. Um, sorry, 450 power, 500 power to actually improve to the next level, depending on how far ahead of time or how far beyond time you are. Um, as more as fellow people improve their technology it, technologies in your particular group, you may fall behind or you may go ahead, and therefore there are penalties here to show that at the same time. So say the... Hijaz here, who are also part of the Muslim tech group, I believe. Let us have a look. Does it tell us? It is. They're part of the Muslim tech group. If they went ahead and be gained a military tech power of 4 before we did, we may, instead of taking 838, it may only take 780, something like that. But yeah, obviously the diplomatic and administration and military powers can be used for other things like boosting your stability or reducing your inflation if you take loans but primarily you want to spend them either improving your three different technologies or improving your national ideas either the Mamluk ideas or the ideas you will unlock I say the first one is at administration level 4 so yeah it's something to think about I say that is, obviously, the Mamluks are a Muslim tech group, but a lot of, obviously, the European nations have the Western tech group. So, if we go to France here, this is the most advanced tech group in the game. They don't suffer any penalty, and therefore, they have the most advantages in improving themselves faster than everyone else. Whereas, like, the likes of the Ottomans have their own individual tech group. Which has a 25% penalty, I believe. Does it tell me? Maybe the Western group does have a technology penalty. I know the Ottomans is a 25% though. And then again, obviously the Ming Dynasty has the Chinese tech group. And so on and so forth, really. 
So yeah, that's technology in a nutshell. If we have any more questions, actually mention them in the comments below because I may not cover everything in this series. There's stuff like colonization, which I won't cover, but it's something I could try and answer in a question below, or maybe something when I do actually get around to doing a video, like a playthrough series properly. When we get to that stage, if I say you want to play a country that will colonize, that's something I could look into. But anyway, in regards to warfare, this is one of the main things you may be doing in this game, whether or not you are warfare in country or not, you may get invaded. And we as the Mamluks, I did mention, we're going to invade Mercuria because we have a claim on Krasia Ibrim here because they are cruelly persecuting some of our religion. Let's look at our religion tab. Um, yes, that is apparently sunny, but there is quite a lot of is it? No, it. Oh, the religion in the province is sunny, which is of our um, religion. Yeah. But also, a lot of Mercuria has part of the Coptic religion. I don't know much about the sunny and Coptic religions, and it's not something that I care too much about, and that may be a horrible thing to say. But in retrospect to the game, Obviously, you know that I have a Catholic nation or religious group on one of my provinces. And that is an issue. They could uprise. They could rebel. And it's exactly the same if like a Sunni nation takes over a, Cop a Coptic um, province. It's exactly the same situation. We would, we would need to convert them to keep them happy. Yeah, I'm going to get a lot of hate in this video. <laughs> Too late. Go ahead. So yeah, let's go to warfare. So the first thing we'll need to consider is, do we have a diplomat free? Yes, we do. We have two. Um, so we'll have one actually improving uh, relations with Hijaz. I think I may have been doing this uh, in my previous video in part three, but I actually forgot to actually make a save. Um, so I had to reload my auto save and quickly rush and do everything I did in the previous video. But yeah, it's mostly the same. We still have a claim on this province. So we're going to click there. It tells us where it is. And we click on the flag of Mercuria. And we can declare war. So as a, we can con as a conquest, we could declare our conquest is to take Krasia, um, Krasia Ibrim. There is a penalty for this, but we gain... Um, that's what we're going for. That's why we're declaring war. We could declare war without a claim, but it is a penalty for this. And it also affects whether or not um, we have a truce with them, which I may be able to show you in this video. It shouldn't be a hard fight. Um, Mercuria is not a major nation. But no, we have a claim and therefore we will use it. If we didn't, say we wanted to make a claim here on Medri. Um, say we want to claim this nation, we could go to Medri, we could go to the uh, Diplomacy, uh, let's go to there. And as a covert action, we could try and fabric uh, fabricate a claim on one of the adjoining neighbouring nations, or neighbouring provinces I should say. This could be done, it takes a year to actually create a claim, and there is a chance we will get um, our... A spy, I suppose you could say, the our diplomat could um, be discovered, and therefore um, we would um, suffer a penalty for that. But we already have a claim, and we're going to use it most vigorously. Let's declare war. So this is the ally section. Um, Mer Mercuria doesn't have any allies right now, thankfully at least. If he did, and there was any ticks next to their name, he could call them into war. We are allied with Tunis and Hijaz. At the moment, they don't want to um, go to war with me. Um, why? Apparently, Tunis is already in a war. Let's have a look. Hmm. No, but uh, I'm guessing what it means by distant war is Mercuria is far too far away that they actually don't care and they won't actually send their troops over. There may also be an issue that they don't have military access through Fezian to actually re reach where the, the war would take place. And Hijaz, 
feel threatened towards us. So even though we're allies, they don't trust us enough to actually come to our aid. But that's fine, we should be able to take Mercuria by yourself. In the previous video, we had a quick look at the Ledger. We know Mercuria doesn't have too many troops. They do have manpower of about 11,000, I believe it was. Uh, we want to look at military. Oh, not buildings, military, thank you. Let's find Mercuria again. Ah, I just saw them there. Oh, so they have 4,000 infantry now. No cavalry, no artillery just yet. But they have 10,000 manpower, so they could get potentially 14,000 troops if they build every day. They recruited quite um, hard at this point. Also, if they lose their 4,000 troops, but manage to, um, if they get routed and have a moment to recover, they could regroup that 4,000 over time if we don't pressure that um, force. But we will be. So let's go and declare war. Um, to take um, Krezia Ibrim. There we are. We are now at war and we've done the typical thing that I always do. And I said you shouldn't do. Never declare war without actually increasing your army maintenance. Because I now may need, may need to wait a couple of months before my army's morale is actually recovered. So I'm showing you an error right off the bat. Go me. So Mercuria is going to have a couple of months to pre prepare themselves because I've totally screwed up there. But so be it. And we are now at war. We have no forces on the border right now. We won't um, send anyone over. I'll increase the speed to 3 out of 5. Just so our uh, morale recovers. Ah, and there's their four units. And they are marching into one of our provinces. We don't have a high morale. So they could potentially win this battle. Now, another issue that you want to consider in the battlefield is the condition of the terrain you you have the if we use the R, R button here to bring up the simple terrain it tells us what sort of terrain is around us we have a lot of desert a great deal of desert um, where does it tell us ah it's an arid country therefore the attrition therefore the attrition of walking through this country you have a penalty to suffer it also tells us it um it has an issue with a supply limit and local settler increase which doesn't bother us because we have nothing to do with um colonization here now let us have a look let's look at this battle we will instantly try to bring we will switch leaders over to this group of seven here and we'll try to bring this unit of seven here into the desert so there's seven thousand men here the seven thousand men um, here with it being a desert region you can see the weight with the fourth army which is this one here therefore because it's a desert region rather than there being a fourteen thousand men here it thinks there's 15 due to the plus one attrition. So we will be suffering um, a loss of men just simply by having too many men here. So these men will arrive on the 18th of August. These men will arrive on the 27th. So they will arrive first, but maybe we'll scare them by having more men actually on the march. Let's find out. Yep, they've paused and now are moving this way. The AI realises that we probably have an overbearing force and have decided to um, change their target basically. So if I actually um, switch these around, pausing in the game is an easy way to do this. Um, if you're playing multiplayer with other people you may just want to slow down the speed rather than pause the game, but for this purpose it's absolutely fine to show you how it works. 
Same again, we'll move these seven down to this province, but we'll move the seven from this province down again, and we moved our lead leader over. So is that going to put them off? No, they're still marching right now. Oh, but they've stopped, and now I'm moving up to Krasia Ibrim. And these two units are actually currently sharing the same province, and there is a skull mark here in telling us that they are actually taking a attrition penalty. They are losing units. And it's shown here actually on this tab as well. So we'll combine this force. Rather than uh, there being uh, 14,000, there's only 13 showing right now because this unit has suffered a loss of 14... Um, 14 men basically and require reinforcement so that's going to pull them um, 49 people from our manpower to basically recover this force we'll keep on waiting we want our morale recovered as much as possible before well before we should have went to war to be perfectly honest but that was my fault there you go our morale's almost full there so we can start actually sending our units in we most likely want to actually have our general march into this um, area because this um, unit of 4,000 um, infantry actually also has a one-star general shown by the star over the bar here. So we're going to switch leaders once again. And at the same time we'll march this um, 14 stack into uh, Berber. Be in mind it only has a supply limit of six, so we're actually going to suffer quite a few losses. Actually, all these have a supply, a low supply limit, so we are going to suffer quite a few losses just by stepping into this province. But we are at war, so we'll accept it. Bear in mind as well that we have this tab here that tells us that we are actually at war, and it is the Mamelukian conquest of Krasia Imbrim, that's what we're after. And it tells us the allied army against, obviously, the defending army. As we are the aggressors, each month we don't complete an objective or take over a province. We take a penalty to our war score, and I'll tell you about war score as we start gaining some, basically. So let's um, continue, let's unpause. That unit isn't marching. We will arrive tomorrow. And there we are. We are at war. So this is a um, one of war screens. We can show our army's morale against the enemy's morale, and also it's like a random dice roll to see each time we hit how much damage we do. So let's have a look. So the idea is we need to break their morale before our morale breaks. With the weight of the army, we should defeat them. And let's see how it continues going. Yep, we won that quite um quite convincingly. And we actually completely destroyed the army. They didn't actually get routed at all. Therefore they haven't pulled back elsewhere. Which is good. We suffered, wow, we suffered about 3,000 um, troops just for stepping into Berber there. So the first thing we're going to want to do is probably split the army. And we'll send 5,000 troops into another province. In fact, we'll do the same. We'll split this army and send it here. And we're going to split this army and send it here. We're basically going to carpet the entire um, nation of Mercuria. And now each of their provinces is under siege and this is obviously the siege potential it starts at minus 42 which means there's a minus 42 percent chance each tick and the tick is obviously this green bar here that that province will su surrender to my army and obviously each tick will use this one for example there was a supply shortage for the defenders there, therefore it's now went to a minus 35 tick. 
<coughs> Excuse me. The Ottomans have rivaled us, that's absolutely fine. It's not really, but for the, pro for the purposes of the tutorial, that's absolutely not a problem. So the Moa Mercuria can't do anything. All their provinces are under siege. They can't recruit anyone. They have no allies to come in and help them out. So basically this war is done and dusted once we've taken the provinces. I just have to keep an eye, see how they're all doing. We've got a minus seven here. That's probably the fastest one. Some provinces, depending on their upgrades, um, will take longer to siege. They have a higher defence chance. Um, such as the earthen ramparts that um, they suggested we build. There's a 14% chance that someone will surrender. percent excellent so some of these what um, province sieges are going well aha if we look at this one compared to this province here if you see this little castle shape here I think that mel it tells us that the walls are still solid and therefore there is an option to actually assault the province but it'll cost us military power and it will cost us lives to do so Whereas here, the walls have been broken, therefore the assault won't be as costly. At least I believe that's how it works. Oh, Hejaz has declared a new, their new enemy of Yemen. I don't think I'm friends with Yemen this time. No, I forgot to cre um, create a, an alliance with Yemen. Oh well. Let's take it up to speed four. We can just um, watch the sieges happen. There we are. We have won the siege of uh, Krasia Ibrim. It lasted 240 days and the garrison finally succumbed to hunger and disease. We now control the province. The garrison were allowed to march out keeping their flags and arms. So yeah, as um, the Mamluks, we actually showed mercy to the army that actually defended the province there. Some nations may not do that. They may actually sack and um, like loot and pillage basically. So they are quite happy to stand there now. They don't need to do anything. We have basically for all intents and purposes um, Krasia belongs to the Mamluks. Um, we can change our leaders here if we so choose whereas here we can't actually Deselect a leader. At least I don't believe so. There he is. No, we can't deselect him and move him elsewhere while the province is not controlled by us. And as you notice, we now have a 26% war score. So if we go and um, look, this is our option for peace. And this is where we can request a. Um, our peace treaty both either as the conquering nation or if we want to surrender we can offer tribute as the conquering nation and as the winner of the current war we can ask for quite a few things we can ask them to give us um, provinces as in we have conquered um, Krasia Ibram right now so we are well not right to ask for it um, as we conquer these other nations, we can request that they are also um, ceded. Sorry, I said nations, I meant provinces. But um, we can also ask for um, Mercuria to become one of our vassals, where they will give us a, a percentage of their tax income. And also, if we go to war, we can pull them into it. We can also ask for war reparations. Actually, quite a few things here. And obviously, more of these will open up if they're available. At the moment, we want to wait because we want actually a greater war score. Let's say, for example, actually. We could ask for Krasia Imbrim because that's actually what we were invading for. 
but we could ask for war reparations as well. And they, as long as there's a big green tick here, they will accept. Um, it we have a positive of 72 over a negative for ending the war of a minus 58. So we could ask for more things. We could ask for some gold. And they only have um, a treasury of 50 um, ducats. So they would give us 54 and it obviously boosts up our peace offer. But they would still accept that. But they wouldn't become our vassal. Even if we didn't ask for this province, they won't become our vassal by themselves by itself. So that's fine. Let's just um, wait it out a little bit longer. Just some more sieges almost complete. Maybe they'll change their tune. Let's have a look at their war enthusiasm. Oh, hello. Uh, I don't like any of these options, but we lose legitimacy. Legitimacy is um, the strength of your ruler. Uh, yeah, legitimacy is a measure of how legitimate monarchs are perceived by their subjects. Heirs with reclaims with low um, will have low legitimacy once they inherit the throne. This is an issue, um, especially for rebellions. Um, nobles who believe that your ruler is weak may rise up and cause a revolt in your own nation. Uh, war enthusiasm is determined by... Um, Obviously, it gives you effects. Obviously, it increases your unrest, your manpower recovery speed. And for a player, I don't think it affects you so much. Most of the time, you always have high war enthusiasm, or at least I believe so. But nations that you're conquering, um, the more you defeat them in battle, or the more you siege their provinces, their war enthusiasm will decrease. And they will suffer more penalties um, to do so. The lower their enthusiasm, the more likely they're going to give you more um, in term in like in the call for peace. For example, Mercury here may not have given me Crazy Ibrim if they had high war enthusiasm, whereas they will with low. And we have actually won another siege, and actually Mercury are offering me a peace offer. Let's see what they're after. Mercurio will offer me war reparations and they will also cede Crazy Ibrim to the Mamelukes. Mercurio will also give me 24 ducats. So if we want to take that offer we could accept but we'll just decline. With that siege we actually gained 41% war score. But we'll keep pushing, we'll keep pushing our luck. They're all in the positives now so this war's almost done. Lithuania is no longer one of our rivals. Why is that? They are under a personal union of Poland. So Poland have um, somehow managed to take them under their wing. Hmm. Fair enough. There's another siege over. This one should... Nope. 63% and it still didn't actually um, complete the siege. That's kind of a shame. There you go. Oh, hello. Gain 10 prestige. Thank you. And we have 86% war score. We'll pause there. Oh. We have converted the heretics of Sidian from the Catholic faith to Sunny. Excellent. I should have been paying more attention to that. We'll end the war score here, even though it's 70%, and in the next um, tick we will probably take it over. But, yeah, let's see what we can actually sue for peace. We could take all the provinces we have sieged success, um, successfully. I want you to be my vassal, though, instead. So I will send that demand. Hey, they will accept. They will become my vassal. I could totally annex them, no doubt, if I had 100% war score, which I would probably get after I've sieged this province. But I'm not really too bothered at the moment. Becoming, uh, becoming my vassal 
um, will actually cost me less um, aggressive expansion, I believe, than actually. And um, oh, what am I trying to say? Oh dear, it'll cost me less ex aggressive expansion if I were instead of actually annexing them into the Marmaluke country. So we'll request that. We'll slow the game back down again. We failed to complete a mission, but we actually did succeed. I don't know how I messed that up, but we... Oh, yeah, because we didn't actually ask for that province. Silly me. Oh, well, that's not how you take over a province of Crescia Ibram. But they have accepted our generous offer. It cost us 50 diplomatic power to um, create that um, peace offer. But um, they have become our vassal and they have paid us 53 ducats. And we gain prestige from actually completing that war successfully. So yeah. We now... They are now a vassal of the Mamluks. Which is very good because it means if we go to war elsewhere. Then we can pull them in and their army will follow our own. One final thing I should probably note before I basically end this tutorial series is another issue of warfare. Um, it's particularly prefer um, mentioned when the ha an ally that you're going to war, they, if you're going to war, say against Austria, say you were playing as Hungary and you want to go against, um, um, say you were Hungary and war against go went to war against. Um, let's find let's find a small nation. Yeah, say you were hungry and went to, wanted wanted to take this province here of Venice. They are allied with Austria, and they would probably pull Austria into the war because Austria is part of and normally leads the Holy Roman Empire. But it wouldn't just be Venice and Austria you would be fighting because Austria would then probably pull in. Brandenburg, Tier, Alsace, and Augsburg. And they might pull in their allies. This is something to be aware of, especially if you're fighting what you consider a small nation, because they may pull in a much more powerful alliance member, and things can snowball quite horribly. Because when you're fighting a number of allies, the war score you gain isn't just for the nation you are fighting against but it's normally an overall war score and you may need to defeat basically everyone's army and sometimes that's just not possible for example right now England is facing off in the hundred years war against France but France have a lot of vassals they're not, they're not only allied with Genoa, Savoy, Savoy sorry, and Tuscany but they have vassals that you may need to defeat as England to actually win the Hundred Years War and it's not going too well for them right now they actually have a negative 44 war score against France and its vassals and allies and that's generally the case um, that's always what happens normally during EU4 it's very rarely that England actually has a positive um, conquest of France but yeah I will end this video here I'll, I'll, I'll end this series here there's a lot more things I haven't actually shown, um, and obviously there's a, few, there's a few things I will have missed, I totally admit to that, but hopefully this has assisted anyone who finds these videos, finds this series, and helps them make a decision whether or not, first of all, if Europa Universalis 4 is a game for you, but also will introduce you to some uh, introduce you to some of the game mechanics I may be using personally if and when I do a playthrough of the series because the introduction that I did the first steps um, in part two and part three can be done within five minutes normally whereas I spent maybe 40 minutes explaining the situation um, but once you have done it a few times and kind of know what you need to do and what you're interested in doing, once you've chosen your goals and how you want to proceed as a nation, as you um, want to govern it, then it's not so bad. But yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed this and this has been Anthwolf. 
as always. And I will see you for more videos in the near future. So, yeah. I hope you've all enjoyed again. And I keep on saying that. I will stop rambling. <laughs> Take care now. Bye-bye.